Hi guys, it's Elfari from the Geek and Hermit. Today I wanted to have a quick look at Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Now it did come out last year, so it has been out for a bit of a bit of a while now. But I've only just basically got around to playing it because I saw it on a sale and I thought, well why not? Give it a go. I've kind of got into a bit of a fighting game kick at the moment, with my plan is to kind of well, not suck at them. I currently still do. Uh, but yes, if you've been keeping on the channel, you'll notice yesterday I uploaded a video of all the cutscenes from the story mode all cut together, but cutting out all the fighting scenes. So it's basically it's just one long, it's about just under two hours long it is, and it's all cutscenes, so it acts like a bit of a movie. And to be honest, it, the plot is mental, but it does include all the characters that are in the game, and it's kind of what you expect from a fighting game. It does look very pretty, and... You can see the production values are there in it. Someone spent some time on it, but again, in total, um, I think it's about four hours long if you include the fight scenes, and that's me being kind of crap at fighting games. So if you do it on your first attempt, each battle probably be a bit shorter. But of course, that's not really where these games, where the core mechanics are going to be too much. I think story is usually seen as like a introduction to the game. Now the first thing, if you played the Marvel vs Capcom games in the past, you'll notice with this one straight away, the biggest change from uh, Fate of Two Worlds and Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3, is they dropped it from three characters to two characters you can have on a team at any one time. Now that felt a bit strange, um, but you do get used to it kind of soon, uh, because I'll always... I kind of miss the three characters, they have introduced a new system with the Infinity Stones, where if you've been watching the Marvel films, pretty much, let's face it, at this point everyone's probably seen at least one of the bloody things. Infinity Stones, I think there's six of them, and each one has different powers and blah blah blah. blah. It's all going to come to a head in a massive film this summer. Uh, but yeah, what you do, you pick your two characters for a team, and you can also pick one of those stones as like a power-up going into each fight. So each one gives like speed, and you can get some health back off one of them. And they all have upsides, none of them have a downside. But obviously, if you pick one, you can't then pick the others. And it's quite clever, actually. It's a good little mechanic, because it kind of, you kind of have to pick your team based around the stone and then kind of counteract what you think your opponent's going to do. And I do like that. It's a good, it's a good addition. Um, the one thing I did find difficult, though, it's been a few years now since I played Marvel vs. Capcom at, at all. And I've been playing Street Fighter V quite a lot recently. I've been kind of obsessed with that, really. Can't play Jory. I'm trying to main her, but I suck. Anyway, but yeah, um, going from that to this, it felt, felt a bit jarring for me because on that, it's kind of stereotypical one-on-one, -on -one, okay, the screen explodes sometimes, but then going on to this, there's a hell of a lot more going on on the screen, like, you know, massive cannons going off, and it looks like a great spectacle, it's just at the beginning, you can't really keep track of what the hell's going on, so the first hour, I didn't really enjoy it because I, I kind of, and the buttons were different as well, and I just, just ugh. But after I kind of spent a bit more time and actually went into the training and the mission modes, I kind of got used to a bit more. Cause like even Ryu plays differently, because obviously the six buttons in Street Fighter is only like four attack buttons on this, so things have changed. Once you spend a bit of time with it, though, you do see... I feel like it's a really well-built game, actually. Um, I may not crap at it, but I enjoy it. Um, but yeah, it comes shipped with um, 30 characters straight from the off. 15 Marvel and 15 Capcom. Now, some of the choices are a little bit strange. I mean, I'm a geek that's been playing games for 20, 30 years now, and now even I had to kind of think who the hell some of them were. I suppose I'm trying to mix up the roster a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a decent amount to launch with. What did annoy me a little bit, though, because obviously, like I said, I've only bought it recently, and it came out a few months ago. Already there's quite a few DLC characters on there, and they're £6.50 each, which to me feels like quite a lot of money for one character. I know people can have a go at me and level it at, like, say, Street Fighter again, for example. Obviously, they release characters, you can buy them in the season pass and whatnot, but what you can do with that, you can grind out something called fight money. It's, it's a bit of grinding, yeah, but you can earn it, and you can actually earn enough to buy characters for free in-game. Of course, you can buy it real money if you want, just to save the hassle. But I like the, f the fact that the option is there. And especially if you buy it now before the arcade edition, you can grind out, because I grinded out three or four hundred thousand, which is enough to buy three or four 
characters straight off without having to pay for anything. And that's just amazing. Six fifty each. It's gonna like what? That's just that's like thirteen quid for two characters. I don't know why it took me so long to add that up. It's not a big figure, but that's starting to get into the realms of being expensive. That where well, it's like thirteen quid, and then you're on twenty quid then for three characters. It's yeah. I think they've got the price point too high. Three ninety nine, I think, would have been fine, and I would have probably been, yeah, I'll buy a couple, but I don't know. Six fifty is a lot. Um, what else can I say about this game? Training mode is pretty good. It's basic standard fare. Um, unless you're obsessive with fighting games, which I'm starting to get there, you probably won't use training mode all that much. Although anyone that gets into them a lot realizes that's where 90% of your playtime will be uh, fiddling around with the dummy settings because yeah, you can actually set it quite a lot. So you can set the computer opponent to jump, block, defend, attack you. You can program in moves and then you can learn your character to kind of counteract what the hell they're doing. And obviously try and spam out combos and everything. So that it does feel well. That feels quite robust. I was happy with that. Mission mode. It's kind of just like a bit boring. It's kind of like, do this combo. Okay. Congratulations. Move on to the next one. Do this combo. Okay. You probably get some playtime out of that. There is a collections part of the screen which can go in. But that's not that fantastic either, I've got to say. Kind of unlock some... Actually... Unlock the movies as you go through. You can rewatch them through there if you want. And also, there's like art, pictures, and whatnot you can unlock. But there's not too much, really. It seems a bit slapdash, not kind of like a second thought, really. If you compare that collections mode to, say, Tekken 7, which I've been playing as well, Tekken 7, Jesus, there's a massive the amount of um, detail you can go in there. You can unlock all sorts, or even Mortal Kombat. You know, with the crypto, you can unlock tons. It's, it just feels like a bit of a tacked on mode, really. It's like, oh yeah, go and we'll upload this. So it feels a bit sparse there. Um, would I recommend it? I think it depends, really. If you're a Marvel fan, yes. Because the characters are, are really good. It's, it's fun to pull off some of the moves and play as Iron Man and whatnot. But I don't know serious fighters or not. I suppose there will be... A population for it but looking at steam at the moment if you look at the um population of it it seems to be going down a bit already like it is kind of dropping off a bit so i'm not sure what the community is like or not i'm going to keep playing it because i want to get better at it but as a positive note actually one thing i do need to mention this could possibly be a very good entryway for people that are new to fighting games Yes, because of the characters' kind of brand recognition there, so it will get new people in already that don't play fighting games. But you can also spam the light punch button. I can't, I can't remember where it is because I, I use an arcade stick. If you just keep pressing that, it'll just you'll actually automatically do combos for you. So you can press it five times and you'll end up knocking the crap out of your opponent, throwing them in the air, doing grapples and all sorts. So even if you don't practice, you'll still look like you know what you're doing and you can actually still put up a bit of a fight. But of course, if you actually put the time in and learn the combos, you'll still beat anyone that does that. But rather than just standing there, crap, just being able to do one punch, one kick, it feels a bit more spectacular as well. And it's also, if you then mix it up by moving the stick around a bit and then pressing it, other things happen. So I think that's, that's actually a real good positive. Just... So I think if it's cheap, I'd give it a go. It's just I don't like the, the price of the characters in it at all. So I don't know. But yeah, please, if you um, have any comments about the game, please let me know. And also, if you get any suggestions to how to better learn this along with Street Fighter Five, because that's my main thing at the moment. I want to learn that. But yeah, I'd love to get involved in the community in this and just see how we can kind of progress. But like I said, please, if you're going to buy it, don't buy it at full price yet wait for it to come on the sale and keep an eye on the population because although I did get a couple of online battles they were sometimes a bit of a wait before the next one and obviously as it gets older and older if there's not a steady community it might be a bit of a bugger now if you're willing to play it offline and you're not bothered about the online thing that's fine you'll be okay with that front anyway so yeah thank you for watching guys I have hope hopefully you've enjoyed the video thank you very much Gear bye